الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا This is my fourth visit to Qatar. A lot has changed in this Arab nation since my first visit back in 2016. I mean, just look at the skyline of Doha. It's one of the world's most interesting cities. Electric, full of energy and bright lights, yet it's among the cleanest, safest, and richest countries on earth. I'm standing on the iconic banks of the bay. You can see these old fishing boats, traditional fishing boats with the flags hanging out. They're made of wood. And behind it, you have the epic skyline of Doha, which is so special and so unique. It's one of those skylines that when you look at it, you know you're in Doha. In your own words, how would you describe Doha? Development, diversity, and the unexpected. You're going to see loads of other cultures, North African cultures, Asian cultures, very prominent, very dominant in, this, in, in our country. And it's Latin part American of our... Cultures life there's no separate you know we're all in it together um, we're all on this land we're all earning here we're living here you know Doha is very small everybody knows everybody so it's very like a peaceful like, society here we're really family orientated we love people um, our culture is really strong Doha will come everybody to Doha for the last 12 years, Qatar has been preparing to be the first Middle Eastern country to host the FIFA World Cup, and it's happening this month. The hype on the streets is building, and it's a surreal time to visit in the wake of the world's most premier sporting event. Qatar is also the smallest country to ever host a World Cup. If it were a US state, it would be the third smallest. Can you imagine hosting a World Cup in Connecticut with over a million people coming in? Behind me is one of the eight World Cup stadiums and it's actually made up of 974 cargo containers because the country code of Qatar is 974. So after the World Cup, they're going to take it down and they're going to reuse the cargo containers. It's pretty cool. Despite its petite size, Qatar is strong and mighty because of its rich economy. The country sits on the third largest oil reserve in the world and therefore natural gas accounts for 70% of the country's total revenue. That explains why you'll see the most urban landscapes and world-class museums. Behind me is the National Museum of Qatar. Uh, it's cheap as a desert rose and it's worth uh, coming to visit. We have now the a temporary exhibition of Paolo Tiarist, a Swiss artist. It's like really nice with lights and such a soothing, a relaxing place. Whoa. It's, so, it's very pretty. Yeah, this is cool. a new world. Travel tip, if you come to Qatar, you should get the One Pass. It gives you access to over 300 experiences like food, museums, fashion, and festivals. And most of all, Qatar is safe. It was just ranked as the safest country in the world for the third consecutive year by the Numero Crime Index. So what's it like to live in Qatar? It's amazing. So I, just, I don't know if you know, it's super, super safe. That's the yeah. main like thing that I love about here. It's actually the safest country in the world. Yes. Yeah. 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 Have you ever experienced any situations here that made you feel unsafe? Never. Really? Never, ever, ever. Not once? Not once. Um, even if it's dark and I'm walking anywhere, like I don't even have to look behind my back. Like as a female or even as a male, like most countries in the world walking at night in a place you don't know is not safe. Yeah. But here it's completely yeah, safe. Here is so safe. Let's talk about prices because this is a $10 video after all. Much like its neighbors of Dubai and Kuwait, Doha is very expensive. However, the prices are relative considering it's higher wages. But to be honest, as a tourist, it's gonna be extra hard to complete this budget challenge. $10 is 36 Qatari Rials, 
let's get this party started. My first stop of the day is Souk Wakif, or the main traditional market. I've been here on every visit to Qatar, and I think that it's one of the best Arab markets in all of the Middle East. It's pretty cool how such a modern city like Doha still has these traditional alleyways and houses, especially near the Souk Wakif area. It is so cool and cultural to walk around these streets. Is this tea or? No tea, juice, tamarind juice. Tamarind juice. Uh, Welcome, Jabbar Allah. Ya Jabbar, Ya Jabbar, Jabbar Allah. Ya Balila. Ya Batayib, Ya Siyad, Ya Batayib, Ya Amir. Ya Tamarind, Ya Siyad, Do. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Um, How much is it? 10 riyals. 10 riyals. Ya Jabbar, Ya Jabbar, Jabbar Allah. Ya Balila. Where are you from? Thank you. Syrian Damascus. Oh, Damascus. Yeah, welcome. I like Syria. Beautiful. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Tamarind, Ya Siyad, Do. Oh, tamarind. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, I would It has like a sweet taste, almost like grape juice. It kind of tastes like grape juice. Tamarind juice. Just like it tastes in Syria. Right now, I'm going to meet a local guy named Hamad. I've been recommended him by several people. Seems like a really cool dude. He's going to Take me around the market. What's up, man? Great to meet you. How's it going? How you doing? Very good to meet yeah. you. I'm good. I'm alive. Yeah. I just finished work. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Look at brushing yeah, up man. on the Arabs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hamad, so we're yes. here in Doha, the right. capital and glorious city of Qatar. Indeed. I, I read something that 99% of the people in this country live in Doha. That's correct. But That's see, there's something you have to understand, like the locals. We don't call it Qatar. We call it Doha. So you could be in this most southern part and it's still, oh, I'm from Doha, <laughs> you know? And so this outfit, this, this beautiful white robe that you wear, yes. is it different than the one in Kuwait and the one in Emirates? Yes. How? Just style, the way we make it, the way it's tailored. So Why do you dress like that? It's, it's us, I'm Qatari. This is our identity. You feel this proud. Yeah, I just feel like a boss too and I put it on every morning, you know? <laughs> like, you just put it on, you feel different and you just get on with your day, yeah. so. Let's do a quick one. This is like your professional, <laughs> professional like, hello, I am a media person now. And then this is like, I got a flat tire and I need to sort it out. Get it, get down. <laughs> you know? And this is how we play football back in the day. Pick it up and turbo mode. Do you feel like unique walking around the streets that you're one of the 8% of people that are Qatari? I'm the lord of the land when yeah. I walk in. No. <laughs> I'll start yes. bowing down. Please, please bow. But you need I'm a fan. I'm a rare commodity. <laughs> Thank you. No, um, it is a bit weird. Like, it is. But then I, got, I, I grew up abroad, but then when I come back here, I met people from all over the world. Yeah. Which is super cool for me. What is this uh, market? How would you explain it? Sugwagov is the oldest market in the city. Like, the first market in the city of like modern Qatar and pre-historic like pre-modern history of Qatar right if you see the old pictures around like 10 meters from where we are that would have been all the waterfronts and boats would dock there and they're typically spice merchants pearl okay. merchants clothes merchants so this has always been a marketplace this land this land yeah it's always been the city like if you think of the biggest market in the country this would have been it Everyone told me about you. I was like, I need to find this guy. This like, is this, the man. Yeah. This is the man, the myth, the legend. Right, so here yeah. in Sugwagif, these yeah. are all like local women who will cook at home and come and sell this food here. Amazing. So this is definitely you have to try it. It's okay. all local food. Take me to get your favorite dish. Madruba. Madruba. What is madruba? What is it? So the name means beaten up. Okay. That's what madruba means. Beaten up. <laughs> beaten up. <laughs> <laughs> Madruba. So it's a uh, wheat, ghee, meat, and they just keep bashing it. It's bashing it. She bashes yeah, and it. And then, yeah. We'll try this. Madruba. I'll pay. That's like against everything that my culture stands uh, for. Okay. All right. We're yes. going to try the madroba. Come on, get in there with me. me? I feel Come okay. on, don't let me do it by myself. Cheers, bro. Cheers. It's a very creamy, kind of sour soup. Not soup. It's a stew. It's a stew, yeah. There's beans in it for sure. 
Chicken, chicken? Chicken. Shredded yeah. chicken, it's really good, bro. And then secret ingredient in all Qatari cuisine is sun-dried lime. That's that's the flavor. That's that, what you're getting. Yeah. Right? yeah. Sun-dried lime, how about that? Despite being crazy jet-lagged and running on literally no sleep, I wanted to host a last minute Just Go meetup in Doha for all the amazing travelers in the community. If you haven't checked out our Just Go app, it's a place for you guys to connect, network, and make new travel buddies. Thanks to my friends at Qatar Creates, they were able to offer me a private auditorium and over 150 people showed up. Hi, how you doing? Pleasure, man. Pleasure, pleasure. Sit anywhere. Hi, how are you? Great to meet you. Meet up in Qatar. Here we go, baby. Hello, everyone. Oh, I don't know what I would be doing. I would not be working a nine to five in an office like in New York. I would be traveling somewhere and finding a way to make a life of travel, whether that means working in a hostel or doing something, meeting people, if I wasn't creating content. Let's go! <laughs> awesome. 99% of Qatar's population, or three million people, live in Doha. So who are the 1% and where do they live? What's happening outside of the big city? It's time to go off into the unknown. Good morning, it is 4.37 a.m. We just drove an hour to the middle of the desert to go dune bashing. If you don't know what dune bashing is, then you're in for a real treat. Are you ready, bro? Okay, you ready yeah. to go? Yep. Yeah, let's start. From the... the sky is like turning pink almost. Yeah. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of pink, purple. All right, we have parked to watch the sunrise from the sea. The last time I was on the sand dunes was in Iran, like seven, eight months ago, and before that was Saudi Arabia. Such a special time to just get out of the city and connect with nature and just, I mean, look at the sunrise behind me. Is that not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life? Oh. So cool. Somewhere in the Qatari desert, you will find four tall brown rectangles. They represent art, and it is one of the strangest sights that I've ever seen, and absolutely worth waking up for. This is how fast we gotta go to climb the hill. Holy shit, this is kind of scary. Actually, it's terrifying. Holy shit. <laughs> so Hale's a pro over here. He knows what's going on. Whoa! <laughs> Holy crap. Damn. Woo! Good job, man. Dude, this, the thrill of that is absolutely outrageous, man. The whole car was covered in sand. So what do you do if you're stuck in, in the middle of nowhere? We have a contact to uh, contact our friends to help each other. Whoa! <laughs> Dude, we're full on leaning. I'm out here in a little camp in the dunes and meet some people, see who's living out here. How are you, good? Where are you from? Are you from Khartoum? I love Khartoum. I'm going to Juba, South Sudan tomorrow. Juba? Yeah. Juba good? Yeah, Juba good. Juba, yes. I'm going there tomorrow. <laughs> Juba. Drew, nice to meet you. Drew. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Drew. Nice to meet you, man. Drew. Drew. For you. You first. Thank you, thank you. Oh, it's, it's uh, spicy, like masala tea. How, how long have you lived out here in the desert? Uh, I've been uh, 10 years. Is it too hot? 
الحين الجو هنا على الطبيعه they said they have their own cars they go to city and bring the things here to make by their own 99% of the people in Qatar live in Doha so it's really interesting to meet the 1% who live outside of the city they are missed because of uh, they are uh, staying in the desert and they are habit now to stay in the desert when they go to the city they are feeling bored behind me is a kind of settlement that they hang out in right here tea kettles right there electricity right here and yeah, lights up there and uh, chairs chairs to chill on It's kind of frightening. Wow. His eyes are crazy. Hey, bud. How you doing? What's your name? Jarra. Enjoying the desert, man? Our journey continued to more remote parts of Qatar. We cut through the desert, across more World Cup stadiums, and then arrived in a tiny town called Duhan. This is a general statement, but it's so cool how every town here and in the Arab world has a mosque. It's the same as when you travel around Europe, they all have a church. It's a beautiful life up here. It's quiet, it's very quiet. There's not skyscrapers. It almost looks more like rural Saudi Arabia, which makes sense because we're near Saudi. I'm enjoying this equally as much as I enjoy Doha, honestly. So there's a problem with our car here. We need to get it fixed real quick. This is the car stop. Everybody comes here to repair their cars. And there's a chai shop, that little red thing that says cafeteria. We're gonna get some Indian chai, my favorite, milk tea. Literally, you just pull up in front of the shop and the guys come out. You know, I was just in Kuwait, the nearby country, filming the hottest city in the world. This might be number two, Qatar. All right, we'll do it. Thank you. How much? Two. Yeah. Two. Oh, there's one. Thank you, bro. This one fresh milk. Is it good? Cheers. Nothing better than a hot cup of chai on a very hot day. Tastes just like I'm in India or Pakistan. That is delicious. Everyone just kind of hangs out outside their car, drink some chai, and then continue on with the day. We are somewhere in the countryside here of Qatar, and I spotted the golden arches. From what I know, the McDonald's here are halal, which is a dietary restriction for Muslims. I'm gonna try to get a menu item here. I've eaten at McDonald's in around 75 countries. I lost count. I'm not proud of it. I do it for the cultural experience because it's super interesting. I mean, just look right over here. They have McDelivery. In the US, we would not have McDonald's bringing you your Big Mac. It would be like Uber Eats or DoorDash. So they literally have motorcycles where they will bring you McDonald's. Look at them. Look at all these bikes. There's like five of them. Can I get the mushroom omelet muffin? That one. Can you take so much 10 real, please? 10 reals. Yes, please. Right in the budget, thank you. Thank you so much, Yeah. It's always interesting to go to McDonald's in other countries because the vibe inside is different. Sometimes you have like parties inside or families eating or music playing. One time I went to a McDonald's and there was a DJ playing in, in Angola, like on, outside. Like literally there was like loud music playing and everyone was going to McDonald's to the party. It's 7 p.m. and the music is blasting. It's fun, you know, it's a taste of home and it's something that you always know what you're getting in any country. So let's see, let's see how this tastes. I'm, I'm curious. All right, we have the mushroom omelet McMuffin, something I've never seen or heard of before. You can see inside here. Ooh, you know what? That actually looks really freaking tasty. I have to admit, McDonald's is a guilty pleasure. Like, it tastes good. It's not healthy for you, but whenever you get the chance, when you're traveling for long times and you're eating a lot of unfamiliar food, this is the way to go. And for two and a half bucks, worth it. Wasn't planning on finishing it, but. Oh, gone already. <laughs> we made our way quickly back to Doha just to try one of the best kept hole in the walls in town. Given that the population of Qatar is about a quarter Indian, that means you can find some pretty good Indian food. So right in front of me is a place called Al Manar. I love how small this place is. It's so cool. The chefs in the back just preparing the food. I mean, this is the good stuff. This is what I look for when I travel. These small little shops that just prepare. Excuse me. You can't even walk by him. They're just preparing their specialty. Very good, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know the place is good when there's only four things on the menu. 
egg sandwich, egg cheese, tea, and coffee. We have a fresh omelet, or as they call a sandwich. You can see inside is omelet in the middle. You have lettuce, tomato, onion, egg. I don't even know, but it looks fantastic. Man, very good. Spicy. All kinds of Indian flavors, chapati, fresh vegetables, wrapped in a beautiful sandwich with egg. And this whole plate for one dollar. Thank you. Hamad, we've been driving for God knows how long, like almost two hours now. Like, where are we going? We are going to an abandoned village of Jamail. So we are in the northwestern part of Qatar? Yes. Which is far away from Doha. Yes. It's a small country, but we, we got to drive out here. It's, yes. it's a drive. I always wonder, like, what do Qataris do when they're not in Doha? Well, they get out into the desert. And we camp, we go fishing, we enjoy the beach. Uh, Off-roading is a wonderful pastime because obviously we're all rich and have loads of money. So we just buy expensive toys. No, but yeah, some, some of that is true. <laughs> There's some truth to that. But the place we're at now is not that common of a destination for Qataris. No, this is... Uh, or anyone, really. And, I mean, it's our history. Uh, this is what Qataris used to live like. And this is what a typical Qatari village was. So let's go learn about this place from the one and only... Anzi Vasa! <laughs> You know what I feel like? What do you feel like? I feel like a bit of an angel. Yeah. If, if I kind of stand like this, I feel like I'm floating above the earth. I feel like an angel too. What an amazing way to end this Qatar road trip at the ruins of Al Jumail, an abandoned pearl and fishing village that was inhabited by the Alcobaisi family over 200 years ago. Today, you can find the remains of the traditional houses with doorways and parts of the walls preserved. If you ask me, it's outstanding. If this is the mosque, this is where they pray. Okay, this so. Uh, the prayer room. So, Hamad is gonna do the call to prayer. Yeah. At the mosque. In the minaret. And then we're gonna pretend like we're living 100 years ago. Imagine this is your job to get up here yeah. five times a day and do the call to prayer. In the 19th century, the average height of a male Qatari was two foot four. Look at the size of those steps. So, we are climbing up the minaret, which is really, really narrow. And this is not made for tall people. And I'm not tall, that's the funny thing. This is not made for someone right. our size. Right, so this is where you do the call to prayer and you can see the whole village from here, so. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashhadu anna Muhammadan rasulullah Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah Hayya ala salah Hayya ala salah I think I got it all right Bro that almost made me cry, man. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> that was really cool, man. Thank you, man. Dude. This is uh, from what I remember. But we're here five times a day, so Dude, I should pay more cool. attention next time. But I... I did... That was pretty cool, wasn't it? I'm trying to not to have a moment on camera. <laughs> have a moment, man. I, I wasn't ready for it, and now it's kind of hitting me, so... It's all right. <laughs> Emotions were good, man. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like connected to something greater. <clears throat> That's awesome, man. Yeah. It's really cool.
I mean, I hope a lot of tourists visit this place and a lot of locals visit this place just to kind of <coughs> pay their respects. I mean, after, after that moment, have a very different perspective. Just to kind of appreciate the history. It's cool, man. This trip to Qatar has been nothing short of incredible. The country truly has a lot to offer, from food to nature to hospitality, and it's a great destination to be hosting the World Cup. To wrap up this budget challenge, I was able to get a tamarind juice, a bowl of hearty soup, one hot milk tea, an egg plate wrapped in chapati, and a halal McMuffin for $9.95. These are the experiences that I live for. How many of you guys actually knew that this existed in Qatar? I didn't before I came here. This is what it's all about, having a moment here. Absolutely beautiful place. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video in Qatar. It was super fun to make. And when you're watching the World Cup, now you know what's happening in this mighty country behind the scenes. It's a special place. Look at the sunset. See you guys in the next video. Peace. Make sure to subscribe to this channel for more epic travel stories from every country. Hit up my podcast called Roots of Humanity. And I also have a second YouTube channel where I share more unseen travel stories. Until next time, stay safe, be well, and just go.